Thunderclap and flash! Six more! Hey everybody, Bam Collectibles here, back for another statue unboxing review for you. We're jumping right into some Demon Slayer statues today. Also, before we do, be sure to like the video and comment below. You know I like to respond to comments. And like I said, statues, we're doing not one, but two Demon Slayer statues today. The first being Zenitsu and the second being someone he cares deeply about. Though these statues have no deep connection with each other, I do want to showcase them together. On the bottom here, we'll see a silhouette of Zenitsu on there. This is made by none other than our Magic Cube Studio, probably one of the best Demon Slayer statue creator studios that exists. On the base of the diorama, we will see that small house or shack where he encountered all the different spiders. Really love it when they tie in direct scenes into the statue. We'll see the Demon Slayer logo there on the front as well. We'll take a zoom shot of all these different details they include on the shack. This hole inside of here, there's a bunch of LEDs inside. You can see them right there. We have some yellow translucent resin on the back. That is the AC adapter cord as well that we use to power those LEDs. On the right side of the statue, we'll see this cloud or dust-like particle. So it looks like they started off with a perfectly clear looking resin and then put a little bit of paint on top to make it look cloudy. There's also that center area that's going to have some thunder shooting from outside of it. Sculpted all throughout and all over are these lightning effect particles. They did a good job at making them look really wild and all over the place, exactly as you would imagine lightning being. And then a notch and magnet can be found on the end where you're going to be able to connect this to the actual base itself. And as I mentioned before, here is a bluer lightning effect that they did sculpt on here. Again, just as wild and crazy looking. Small notch, a magnet on the end there. But there's quite a few of these pieces that they sculpted. I'm just kind of showcasing these two up close for now so you get a good look at them. One of these effect pieces actually arrived snapped in half. Stay tuned later if you want to see how I did go about repairing that and fixing it. This right here is the largest of the blue lightning effects that they sculpted onto the statue. You can see here there's kind of a main piece that goes up and they somehow added all these other pieces on the side. They're actually pretty fragile. You can pull them off. You have to be really careful. I was actually afraid of them snapping as I was doing their view. So super, super careful if you did buy this statue when you are installing this on here. We have that nice little wood particle that was shot from the actual shack or house. What's cool about this piece too, as we install it, is it does give a specific feel to the statue show. It's gonna be right directly dead center of the statue, and it does make it look like Zenitsu is popping straight through the roof. Again, to add to the fact that Zenitsu is shooting from the roof, they have multiple different parts of wood that were sculpted separately. Here are all of them together, small notches and magnets on the side. Uh, it was a little bit tricky to figure out where each one of them go, but after you know finding a hole and then picking each one, it's like finding a piece of a puzzle. Uh, they all did end up finding a place. I also love that they added poison on the roof on the bottom. Unlike most Demon Slayer statues that I've showcased so far, Zenitsu actually arrives with only his hand, actually both hands, and one of his arm sculpted separately. The single point of contact that connects him to the statue is this steel rod and notch. Also, his outfit colors are extremely well done. I've always loved personally the contrast of his outfit, right? You have those earthy tones with the black and brown, but then when you mix in all the orange and yellows, it just pops so well, especially on a statue like this. See here, the arm was sculpted on, just missing the hand, and they also have that belt there that's gonna hold the katana. You also see this right arm only has the notch inside. There's a magnet, hard to see, but it's there. As I said before, I love the color of his outfit, but I don't know how the heck they got all this shading. So there's so many grooves and folds in the outfit because of how dynamic he is. And they also were able to get all those white triangles sculpted on there perfectly. But zooming in on his face, it looks incredible. I've seen some statues made of him where his eyes are open and it's almost like a pure white look, sometimes LEDs, but they did decide to go with the closed eye look here. This one was a little tricky. I couldn't just get it in with one hand, so I got it kind of propped into place, and then we have to get it properly positioned with both hands. But once installed, it looks amazing. It was floating in midair like that. So the blade or the katana is in the sheath. We have the hand pre-attached to it, so it all comes in one piece like this. I've always loved the white design of Zenitsu's blade. It looks fantastic how they brought this to life. The hilt on the blade also has the unique little triangle sculpted onto there. We have a little bit of a gold strip going down to the bottom, but very well done. Magic Cube usually doesn't skip or skimp out on any details for their statues. The belt that was on the waist has a little bit of flexibility to it, so you have to bend it down just a little to get the wrist to fit right into the socket. 
For those that will own this statue, just be careful not to put too much pressure on there. And here we have the other arm with the hand pre, actually it wasn't pre-sculpted on, this was actually sculpted separately, but I pre-attached that on there. So pretty plain vanilla, but the way that it fits onto the hand, the positioning of it after installed looks extremely cool. Hope everyone is excited for the next Demon Slayer statue showcase as well because we're going to be showcasing Rengoku on the channel. I cannot wait. The movie is going to be coming out in the very near future here in the United States as well. So I look forward to seeing and viewing that. Here we have the largest of the yellow translucent resin pieces for the lightning. Now this one has a large notch with a magnet, also a small steel rod on the side. So it's extremely heavy. That's why they have kind of more reinforcements to help it stick onto the base. They also sculpted more pieces to go on to build onto it, so that's where you'll see that magnet and small notch on here as well. As we will take a look at the LEDs later in this review, man, this is my favorite piece that lights up later on. Also, it's pretty cool. The lightning piece does wrap around his kneecap, so if Zenitsu is to ever come loose or fall out, that should catch him and keep him into place. And here are the other two effect pieces that they sculpted separately. Always good when they do sculpt them separately because it typically does allow them to not have breakages or at least it prevents a lot of things from being broken off. Unfortunately, as we're moving on to the rest of the review, I did say that there was a break. And so I want to go over that and show you, you know, exactly what happened. So this is how it arrived. This is how it looks. And I want to show you and walk you through what I do to get it to its best condition as possible, even though I can't prevent this from happening. First off, you're gonna to wanna to have some very fine sandpaper. The purpose of this is to create a few scratches onto the inner part of the resin so that the glue does add on and stick to it easier. Sometimes if you try to glue pieces without doing something like this, it doesn't stick and it takes you maybe like five to 10 minutes for it to actually you know, bond together. But this is the glue that I use. When it does dry, it dries on clear. You don't have some weird white streaks that come down from it, but less is more here. So just putting a little tiny dab. Sometimes you should use a toothpick as well to apply this, but there's a very fine tip on that one. But I'm gonna speed through this as like a time six speed. So we get through it pretty quickly. But thankfully after about one minute, it holds, it bonded. This is how it looks. So I did the best I could, though you can still see it. Thankfully, this piece is actually in the back of the statue, so probably the best piece that could have broken. For any of the links to these supplies, please see the Amazon store affiliate links in my description. And sometimes, you know, breaks just happen. Deal with them as you can. If you can't get a replacement, fix it yourself. Thankfully, sometimes they do make replacements, so contact the reseller. But if not, do your best to repair it if it's not that big of a deal. The addition size, obviously we have a triangle perfectly fitting. Magic Cube's logo, the addition size, and this little chibi looking version of Zenitsu on there. This is kind of the staple for what they've done for other ones, but it also has a PVC stand that we have here that it can rest in, flip it over whichever side you want it to, and display it next to the statue. And with the lights dimmed down, we can see how amazing the LEDs look on this statue. I just love the contrast and colors. As I mentioned before, the yellow effect piece being my favorite of the lot, but it looks good in the dark, but it also looks amazing in the light. It just adds a whole nother dynamic feel to the statue. Up next is Nezuko by Up Arts Studio. Compared to Magic Cubes and Nitsu, this is gonna be a lot more relaxed and chill of a statue. The base itself kind of brings you back to the original, you know, first episode of the series with it being more of a snow theme. No matter what I do, I'm going to end up having glitter on my fingers because that's what they use to make it look like the sun was reflecting off of the snow. Also take note as well that the base on the bottom, typically it's like a black round base that we see on these, but I do love the nice shading of the light and darker purple. So far, this will be my third up art statue that I've seen in person. I have to say I'm really impressed by the work that they do. We'll go over this one quickly, but they did sculpt a branch separately. We can see little bits of snow that are dangling and hanging off there. There is the notch and magnet that help it attach itself to that smaller portion of the base. This next piece right here really serves to add an artistic feel to the statue. The steel rod and notch are obviously how it attaches itself to the base. And then this piece on top here reminds me of more of a, a classical version of an oriental art piece. The actual center piece with all the snow on there feels like a tile. So it doesn't feel like resin or anything painted on there, but somehow they printed on top of an actual tile. First time I've ever seen ceramics on a statue, but hey, turns out good. And it actually looks extremely pretty behind her. Somebody might beat me up for saying this, but it reminds me of like a, just a piece of artwork right now that you'd see in an oriental traditional home. Sculpted for Nezuko to sit on, we have the box that Tanjiro did build for her that she does sleep in and he carries. Everybody's very familiar with the purpose of this, but it is really well done. The shading all throughout, the way that they look, the way, how the wood looks so realistic. The straps look good. Also, the metallic does have a shimmer and shine to it. 
you'll notice this corner is rounded out because that's where it's actually going to rest against and meet the base. Now, you don't want it to be textured because if it's textured, it could potentially scrape the bottom of the base, which you don't want. Here we have one of two effect pieces that they sculpted and really they have and serve no purpose other than enhancing and making the overall statue look prettier. We have that small notch with a magnet, how it attaches, some pretty little pink petals on there too. This specific piece attaches itself to the box and then the box itself just slides right into the slot or keyhole. Before we jump into the character sculpt, this is that second effect piece that they sculpted on here. A lot of movement going on there, but just like the other one, it has a notch with a small magnet. Instead of attaching itself to the box though, it's going to be put on the branch that's sitting to the back right side. One of my favorite parts about this statue, which I'm sure not everybody's gonna feel the same about, is the fact that they focused on trying to make Nezuko look cute. So many other statues out there focus on trying to make her look too sexy. We all know how old she is, right? So why in the world would they focus on trying to do that? I think Up Arch did a perfect job at, at capturing her character and who she is. This part is smooth and not a lot of paint detail because that is where it's gonna attach itself to the box. The shading on this is flawlessly done. looks great. Flipping over to the front of the outfit, they captured all the details perfectly well. You look really closely to her fingernails. They are long and have two different colored textures on there. So nice detail that they added. The neck will later attach itself with that small hole you see in there and a steel rod that's inside that allows it to go into place. No magnets. And like I said before, they focused on trying to make her look cute. And I really think that they captured that emotion as we go into the face. Up Arts did a great job sculpting the hair dynamically flowing. We have all the shades going from the, the orange red. We have kind of a metallic purple looking tone going into the black. There is that neck joint with the steel rod and zooming in on the face. It is just, it's so good. They did such a good job. And if anybody ever wonders how they get the eyes to look so well, I do believe they use something called like laser cut uh, stickers that go on there and then the layer goes on top. We have the bamboo also in her mouth. So just perfectly representation of her character here. Zooming out, there's basically two ways you can display this. So Nezuko can be centered and have that back piece be diagonal, or you can have it straight like this and have her be off. But I kind of prefer her to be the center of attention with the effect piece being off to the side. All right, so we have Zenitsu in 1-6 scale and Nezuko in 1-8. That's why they look off, but here's how they look both together. I look forward to seeing you in the next unboxing of Rengoku, and I hope you enjoyed today's unboxing. If you did, be sure to subscribe, hit a like, and I'd love to comment below, and I will see you in the next video, everybody. Do as you love, and love what you do. Bam out.